everybody. It's just an enormous pleasure to be here, and this is absolutely so cool. My mother would be so proud. We've got a whole conference here named after me. <laughs> totally amazing. So, own your passion. Find your passion. I mean, what the heck is that? Isn't it really about what you do with your passion? So stick with me for the next 10 minutes or so, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about how I found my passion, how I owned it, and what I did with it. So, this is supposed to work, and it does, and this is where I work, and many of you know where this is. It's the University of Western Ontario. I'm the Vice President responsible for research and international relations, and this is a very, very cool job. I get to work with very smart people all day and help them develop their ideas and discover new things and new knowledge that creates benefit for our society. And, and who could imagine doing something cooler than that? It's an absolutely phenomenal job. But how did I get here over many, many years of effort? That's the question. And it really all started here. That's a highway. And that's the highway I took when I was 20 years old in 1974. Now you know how old I am. $300 and several thousand kilometers later, I ended up in Brazil. It took me three months. I didn't even know you could hitchhike to Brazil. That's how dumb I was then, but I went anyway. Couldn't even get across. You can't get from Panama to Colombia by road. So I had to take a short flight. I got over that. So I arrived in Brazil. There I am. I don't see why that's funny. And it's not, this is 1974, folks, and Brazil is under military dictatorship. And it's not that safe. And I was never arrested, but I was detained at gunpoint, and that's a special feeling. It makes you all warm and fuzzy inside, as, as you'll imagine. But I travel. I went all over the country, from one end to the other, with the few dollars I had. And it's a beautiful, beautiful place. The architecture, you see churches built by the, by the Portuguese centuries before. Famous landmarks and works of art. Beautiful vistas and scenery. If you've, if, and how many people have been to Brazil? Anybody been there? So this is just a, a classic view of, of Rio de Janeiro. Just absolutely awe-inspiring. Now, that's a beach. I spent you know, a couple of days probably on the beach. You meet a lot of people on the beach. And it's a beautiful place. And you relax and you have fun and there's carnival. And then sometimes you end up in places like this, which is the other side of Brazil. And you gain experience, and you talk to people, and you understand what it's like to live in a place where, yes, you can spend the day in the beach and live in a million-dollar condo on Ipanema. But you can live in a $15 shack in a neighborhood like this, and you can meet people like that. And this woman found her passion. She owned her passion. And her passion was to transform that neighborhood that you see behind her into a neighborhood with proper sewage, with running water, with pavement, with schools. And she did this for 20 years. And you meet people like that. And eventually, you run out of money, folks. And you go back to Canada. And it's cold and gray and it's May. And I went back to university and I was 21 years old. And I decided that I'd found my passion. And my passion was this place and what people like her do there. And I studied, and I worked, and I graduated, and I took a job, and I was a professor for many years. And I wrote on, on social movements in Brazil and the kind of activities that people like this have undertaken for many years. I studied collaboration between cities to improve infrastructure. I studied social movements and support groups for people with HIV AIDS. Became an administrator, and then one day, I found myself on this. You know what that is? That plane? That's one of the Canadian government's transport planes. And on that plane was me and the Governor General of Canada and about 20 or 30 other people, and that was in 2007. So remember the picture of the guy in the funny kind of gauze shirt there? I ended up getting off this plane with an honor guard with the Governor General, having been back in Brazil, having now not been the vagabond hippie that I had been all those years before in a much different role. And here's our motorcade as we move through the street. And we ended up in the capital, in Brasilia, and spent time with people who were in charge of government. 
And you can see the Governor General, she's just a little person right in the middle there, but walking up this ramp with an honor guard. And there was an entire cavalry that came up this street. So all those years later, 20, 30, nearly 40 years later, I came back to Brazil in a much different role. And later assumed responsibilities with the federal government, working on bilateral relations, finding ways to improve relations between two countries that really don't know each other that well. And it was a phenomenal experience. And I enjoyed it thoroughly. And I own my passion. And I think for you folks, you really have to understand what your passion is and where you are going to allow that to take you. It's not so much a question of finding it and owning it. It's how you're going to move that along to a new place, to a new plateau. So now I'm an administrator. And I have responsibility for moving research forward in collaboration with researchers and with students and graduate students who come to our university. I have the opportunity, where possible, to decide where we will place our emphasis in terms of research, how much money we will allocate to different programs. I have a responsibility and the, and the freedom, in a sense, with my colleagues at Western to determine where we should be going globally, where we should be investing, how we should be improving the lives of others. And it's a tremendous role. And it all started way back when, on that day when I hit that highway and never looked back. And Brazil has become, recently, an extremely important component of our international relationships at the university. We have nearly 20 people at our university, by pure chance, who have immigrated from Brazil, who work on a variety of subjects in everything from neuroscience to alternative energy, in dentistry, all of whom found their passion, but ironically their passion was to come to Canada and to develop research programs and to work with students and to hire staff and to set up labs and to do research. So through their lives, they ended up at Western. They ended up at Western with me as the Vice President of Research and International Relations and together we now build a collaborative program of research between the University of Western Ontario and Brazil. We're negotiating specific and special research funding opportunities between the two countries that haven't existed before in order to support that. So we're building infrastructure, we're building capacity in a country about which Canadians know very, very little, but which has huge potential, nearly 200 million people. It will soon be the fifth largest economy in the world. It has some of the best schools in the world at the university level. And there are many of those folks who would love to come to Canada. And there are many of you who undoubtedly would love to go to Brazil. We have to forge those ties. We have to create that dynamic in order that together we can create more than the sum of its parts. So you want a two plus two equals five. And we do that by moving people by me going there and creating a whole series of opportunities, by people from Brazil coming here and creating another series of opportunities, but by together creating something that is so good and so much greater. And it doesn't have to be Brazil. It can be Africa, it can be India, it can be China. But it all starts on that highway. So, find your passion, own your passion, but let it take you where it will and go with it and never look back. Thanks a lot. Everybody.